We will first play through at performance speed, symphony number 35 of Mozart, K385. This is measure 15, not the very beginning. So if you listen to a recording, make sure you wait for about a minute until you get to measure 15 to get to this part. Remember, it's in D major and it's in cut time. <laughs> Now we'll go over what the issues are and some of the challenges here. So we start with the double D, which is our two on G in third position and open D played at the same time. You can check if your two on the G string is in tune. If you can see the open D is ringing, I'm not touching it with my bow. I'm only playing on the G string and you can see my open D really vibrating. So that's how you know it's in tune. And then when you add with the open D, Sounds really nice. And then octave. The trick here is make sure you hold to the very last note, separate, keep your fingers down, make sure you play a C sharp. So you're in third position with the high one. So you start with the double D, octave. Make sure you separate. You notice it has staccato marks, which means separated, and they are going to be a little bit shorter. Third position, make sure it's C sharp. You'll notice that I stopped the trill a little bit short time wise, and that's to make sure that the 16s come out nice and clean. So, this is just a basic D major, two octave scale. You'll notice that I shifted on the A string. That is because C sharp to D is a half step where G natural, if I were to wait in the E string, is going to be a whole step shift. Now, if I were to shift in the E string, it would be a little bit brighter, but for sake of accuracy and speed, I'm going to shift in the A string and a half step. Make sure you try to phrase and crescendo going up and then decrescendo going down. Shift on the slur. First position, make sure it's a low two. Open knee, then pinky, right? We do not cross if the note before and after is on the same string. So the first opening is better. Second, we have to use pinky. So, open, pinky, same thing. Then make sure you tighten up your right hand a little bit. Your fingertips need to be more. Third position, pull back a half step. Exchange to a two, trill with a three, three, move up a half step to second position, three, shift up to third, shift up to third, fourth, and this is where we're going to just quickly shift down to third, pull back one, try not to move the entire hand, but more or less just move the pointer finger very quickly, and don't forget about the forte piano, pull back, accent in forte, shift and a half to a G sharp, so this whole step is, or this sixth, is either C sharp, make sure that the distance between the two fingers is a whole step, and also Add a little bit extra stretch because you're in A, a and E string, which means you have to go between two strings. So stretch a little extra. And I will practice this shift from a C sharp first to E. First position to third. Then practice going to the double stop. Okay. Triple it at the frog. Separate, long, long, 
one of the most common mistakes on this kind of hooked bow, where you have a dotted eighth note, 16, is to separate both notes and make them short. That's technically incorrect rhythm because the first note should be three times as long as the second note, one, two, three. So when you see this kind of rhythm and bowing pattern, make sure that the first note of the up bow is long, quick separation, and then short. Long, short. Again, you're gonna keep the one down. You're gonna put a holster for the two, holster for the three. Same position. Now very often here, I would advise you to use open string, open E here, but you will have to press a little bit. So sometimes when we don't pray, press enough with that bow, we get the screaming sound. The way around that is to make sure you really press. All right, so make sure if you don't you could stay in position and you could play one, three, one, two, three, oh, two, four, two, oh. But I would rather be on the E string, it's gonna be more bright, and just make sure that you really press the bow on that open E and open A so that it doesn't squeal. Now the next part is tricky because you don't have open strings. So what I would do is on the D string, the three and one down and I would just roll it for the last note so don't forget about the forte piano on the last note so last line is D major arpeggio separate the long notes forte piano but make sure to hold the last note to its full value if you're having a hard time playing all of these runs of 16th up to speed Try practicing with rhythms. There's four major ones, long, short, long, short, long, short, long, long, short, 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 followed by short, 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 long. So here's the first pattern. Next, you could do short, long. You could do one long, three shorts. And last, you could do three shorts, one long. The reason this works is number one, you re engage in your brain because you're making it more challenging to play it a different way. The second reason it works is that you're doing half or parts of the runs fast while the other parts are slow, which gives you time to prepare. Right. Keep your fingers close, know your distances, hold them half steps, and this should allow you to play up to speed. Mm -hmm. 